So if anyone, I'm just saying, it's now um, now recording. <laughs> uh, if anyone doesn't know me, my name is Suzanne Walker um, and I am the, uh, sorry, my presentation, yep. Uh, I'm the director and owner of Clear Path Accounting. Uh, we're located in Blacksland, so it's not far from, from Penrith at all. Uh, we've been operating for five years now. Obviously, we offer accounting and taxation services, uh, but we find far more excitement in offering uh, business advisory and business coaching services as well. Uh, we love to help business owners understand their numbers uh, so they can make better decisions, uh, so they can build a profitable business uh, and then live their best life. Okay, so let's kick it off uh, with some wise words from uh, Thomas Jeff Jefferson. If you want something you've never had, you must be willing to do something you've never done. So he wrote those words around about 230 years ago. So they're still relevant today. Uh, this session is about challenging you to do something different in your business so that you achieve uh, results that you have not achieved before. Um, this is especially true uh, during this pandemic, uh, for which New South Wales businesses, um, it's really challenging at the moment. We're just totally unsure of how long this lockdown is going to be. Uh, and I know that a lot of business owners are starting to feel really concerned and anxious about where their, where their business is going to end up. So before I get stuck in, I'll just throw out the usual disclaimer that the information in this webinar is general in nature and is no substitute for tailored advice. Um, I do encourage uh, you to take notes and submit your questions through the chat panel. Sharon will be monitoring those questions for me. So as I said, um, we will uh, have a question session at the end of this first presentation and then we'll have another question session at the end of the COVID support. Okay, so I'll be talking about making um, a choice to change, um, how to develop a roadmap and a dashboard for your business to monitor those changes that you're making. I'll talk about the seven ways to grow your business. Uh, and I'll also show uh, a worked example of how that um, can, you know, uh, how seemingly small adjustments in your business can really help the bottom line. I'll also take some questions uh, and then we'll get through to COVID. So um, I'm, I'm feeling that there's a lot of, uh, we were discussing this at our um, Chamber of Commerce meeting last night, that there's a lot of small businesses um, are experiencing change fatigue, um, but it's just, it's not over yet. So it's really important to keep at those changes. I know we're tired, um, but we just don't have a choice. All right. Um, and I believe that of all the people in the community, business owners are most adaptable to change because we do it all the time. Okay, so generally there's um, the five steps of the change process. Uh, they call it the five A's. Uh, the first one is awareness. Um, and we've got to be aware that a change needs to, to happen. So perhaps we need to work smarter, not harder. Um, we want to make more time for the family or uh, we want to produce better financial returns for ourselves. Acceptance. We have to accept that there needs to be, uh, sorry, we have to accept that things need to be done differently. So effective planning here is critical to achieve that change. So number three is action. Once you've got the plan in place, um, it's really important to implement. And we know this is the hardest step and it's where most business owners get stuck. So just take one step at a time uh, and then you'll find that momentum for change will grow. Accountability. Uh, we also know that accountability makes things happen. So for me, uh, my business coach was a life changer. Uh, I'm accountable. 
for the things that I'm going to say I'm going to achieve. Uh, and it's really the one thing that has kept me on track to grow my business significantly. And then the last one is acknowledgement. So apparently it takes 21 times to change a habit. So there you go. So acknowledge the changes that you make and celebrate them as well. Um, and it just gives us a reminder of what we have achieved, especially during these difficult times. So there's three steps in creating a roadmap for your business. We're going to figure out where you are now, where you want to go. Um, we're going to create a, a plan to get there. And then we create a dashboard to monitor your progress. So before we make a plan, uh, you must first understand where your business at, is at right now. So your point A. So COVID may have affected your business. Um, you... Um, your destination or your goal or your point B, uh, it may be more difficult to get to that point B now that uh, COVID uh, is, uh, has hit us again. So um, it may be more difficult or it may take you a longer period of time. For example, you may have a goal to change your um, cash overdraft to a positive cash balance or paying off your tax debt um, you might have a goal of achieving revenue uh, growth of 35% even in COVID period um, or improving your profitability by a straight $100,000. Um, uh, you might want to find more freedom away from the business. I know that's a goal that I have at the moment um, or simply surviving COVID. So do you know what your point A looks like in your business? Where are you now? Where do you want to go? And with what and with in what time frame do you want to make that happen? So now you know where you want to go, uh, you'll need to revise your plan. Now revising, um, you might need to revise an existing business plan or uh, develop a, a business recovery plan. So if COVID um, if the COVID impact on your business has been fairly minimal, um, I would say updating your existing business plan is a good idea. But if you've experienced significant um, impact from COVID, then I would recommend that you do um, or prepare a business recovery plan. So a business recovery plan will help you revise your personal budget and it's purely to reduce the pressure um, on your business's cash flow. It's one area we can control um, quite quickly is our own spending out of the business. Determine, um, you might want to determine what uh, additional finance you need in the business um, and the effect of the support that you might be able to get in the business. Um, and then you can also revise your budget and your break even analysis. All right. So um, um, during the last shut down, we helped clients create a business recovery plan. Uh, in fact, we do have a template available. So if you put your email address in the chat box, we can send that through to you and you can work through that. Uh, if you need any help, you, just, you can just let us know. Um, establishing your most critical KPIs um, is also important. Then you want to set goals for 30 days, 90 days, and then um, on an annual basis as well. Um, and obviously measuring and monitoring those, those results is important uh, because this helps you identify opportunities, vulnerabilities and critical challenges. So when working out your, uh, your budget, um, if you're, uh, especially during COVID, uh, start with the profit that you need to make in your business. Then you can work your way up to determine your required sales level. Um, and this is the easiest way. Um, I mean, this is going to be a very simple example. Um, so let's just say in the past, your profit goal was 150,000, uh, but you've worked out that during COVID, you don't spend as much money, um, you can live off less, uh, and to put less pressure on the business, you've decided that your profit goal will be $130,000. So if we work backwards, then your um, overheads might have been 
350,000, but going through your overheads, you might be able to trim that down by $25,000 uh, and down to 325,000. So this will give you a gross profit of 455,000. Uh, and then if you wanna retain your current uh, gross profit percentage, which in this example is 39%, uh, then you'll need to achieve a sales of $1,166,000, all right? So you can see that you've, you've taken a little bit of pressure off the business, uh, actually by $115,000, you're still maintaining profitability uh, and you've worked out that you've, uh, the 130,000 is enough for you to live off. So obviously you'll need to develop a more detailed plan than this. Um, and you'll, it's really important to break down your targets on a monthly basis and then monitor it. So now you know where you're going uh, and what you want to achieve. Uh, so now it's time to set up your dashboard. So just like a car dashboard that shows you fuel, uh, the temperature in the car, um, when the little light comes on for the oil, <laughs> what does that mean? Don't ask me. But basically what we want to do is build a, a dashboard for your business so that it's really easy for you to follow your progress uh, and make changes super quick. So your dashboard will include your key performance indicators. Um, and that might be four or five of your most important measures that drive your business, okay? Now, you could have your dashboard electronically. It might be, um, you know, on your operation software. It could be a whiteboard uh, on the wall of your workplace. It could be monthly reports that a team member provides you, whatever it is. Um, just make sure that you're monitoring your dashboard and doing that as a team is a really important, um, uh, I think that really works in a team environment and it helps the team members drive the business to where it wants, uh, where it needs to go, rather than you doing the driving all the time as well. Okay, so we'll just do really quick examples uh, for a manufacturer. The most important KPIs might be your gross profit percentage, uh, cost of rework, your work in progress days, uh, and your debtors days. Uh, for a retailer, your most important KPIs might be your top line, so your sales figure, um, your gross profit percentage, average uh, client spend, uh, and then transaction frequency. So it is important to determine what KPIs you need to measure in your business, uh, setting goals for improving those KPIs, uh, and then establishing a, a dashboard or some type of reporting so that you can regularly monitor your progress. So remember the five A's of change. One of them is accountability. Um, uh, so it's proven that accountability makes you uh, responsible for change. It lessens conflict. So it might be conflict within yourself or conflict with others. Um, it improves performance, uh, inspires confidence, and it, and it helps you achieve results. So you may have a friend, find someone, you know, a friend, a business coach, business mentor, accountant, someone to hold you accountable. Um, whoever it is, make sure you update them with your plan uh, and also your results as well. Okay, so before we get started on the seven ways of growing your business, uh, I think it's important that we go through um, what's called a marketing flywheel. So this concept shows um, how to attract, engage and delight customers. Um, and it demonstrates that you shouldn't just focus always on getting new clients or, or customers. So keeping your existing customers happy can be really powerful. So first, uh, we have strangers. So people who haven't heard about our business, they don't know how we help, they know nothing about us. Um, and then marketing is actually um, what introduce, introduces our business to these strangers who then become prospects. 
Now, um, prospects have the opportunity to buy from us. Uh, so when the prospects make a purchase, then they become customers. And if we treat them right, nurture them, look after them, uh, then they'll become promoters of our business. So the more promoters we have, uh, the more likely our business is talked about with strangers and then the cycle continues again. So in order to attract uh, prospects, we need to provide value before we extract the value from, from our customer. So think about what problems that you solve for them and what value that they will receive. So to convert the prospects into customers, we've got to engage with them and make it really easy to buy from us. So our marketing attracts and engages the prospects and turns them into, into customers. So um, our sales process should ensure that the customers continue to be engaged and are provided with a really great service. So delighted, we know that delighted customers will share um, their feedback with strangers, um, which then creates more prospects, customers and promoters. So the aim is to keep the marketing flywheel spinning as fast as possible, uh, and then converting the strangers into prospects, prospects into customers, customers into promoters. And this is the way um, this really helps to grow our business. Okay, so let's go into the seven ways to grow your business. So these are seven key areas uh, in every business um, that can help grow a business um, and it doesn't matter what you do or what, you, or, or what size your business is. Uh, in fact, when we sign on a new client, we actually give them a little gift and it's called the, um, the business growth strategy map. So there are some clients who will know what that is all about. Um, and it shows, um, it, gives, it shows these seven areas of growth in a business and it also lists uh, like hundreds of ideas how to improve each of those seven areas in the business. So that's our little gift to new clients and it's a little poster and they can hang it on the wall and then just whenever they feel like they need to grow a particular area in their business, they can just look at that uh, and then work away at it. So the first way to grow your business uh, is to increase customer retention. So this is the easiest way to grow your business. So of the seven um, steps. So in fact, it's six times easier and cheaper to make sales to existing customers than to new customers. So some examples might be give them a birthday card, follow through on, on your promises. That's a really big one for me. Um, share customer success stories, make a guarantee, create a loyalty program. Whatever it is, find a way to delight your customers. Okay, so the second way to grow your business is generating more leads. Now, this is the most expensive step uh, because it involves marketing, um, which can be quite expensive. And we know that generally um, only 20% of your marketing is effective. However, one way um, to create more leads is to delight your existing customers, like we spoke about, who then become promoters of your business. But we can't solely rely on this. So creating some marketing strategies is important uh, and providing value to the prospects is also important. So some examples might be to have a free download on your website, um, uh, do some blog posts on your website, marketing to a particular niche, um, creating alliances and referral partners so that you're attracting the right type of client or even hosting a webinar. Look at me creating my leads here. Um, whatever it is, the goal is to create awareness about your business, what problems that you solve, uh, and then what value you provide. So the third way to grow your business is increase your conversion rate. So um, 
it will be interesting to know how many of you measure how successful you are in converting leads into sales. Uh, we do it. We have a spreadsheet. Uh, if any of my clients want to copy of that spreadsheet, just email Sharon. She'll happily share that with you. But basically, um, I'm happy to share that my current conversion rate is about 68%. So there's always room for improvement, I say. Uh, but we monitor this every single month. Um, if you have a sales team, you should be monitoring every sales person in your team. Um, if some are performing better than others, find out why. So learn what is working uh, and then change the things that aren't working. So some strategies to increase the conversion rate may be to reverse the risk for a customer. So that might be um, issuing a service agreement or a guarantee for a customer so that basically the risk um, is removed so it makes the purchase a no-brainer. Act like you don't need the sale. I actually quite like this one. And I feel like um, it has worked for me. Uh, when I first started Clear Path Organic Accounting, I remember issuing my very first service agreement and I was literally <laughs> shaking. <laughs> and luckily, he was an existing client that I'd already dealt with. Uh, so he was very calm and he said, Suzanne, it's all right. He basically held my hand. Um, so I went from just terror because I knew I needed the sale at the beginning um, and then I've developed more confidence. But by, by acting like you don't need a sale, even if you do, um, you become less of a salesperson uh, and you also make the sales experience a lot more relaxed. Um, build your relationships early. So nurture your prospects through your sales process. Um, and so they're more comfortable to buy from you. Uh, be seen as an expert uh, and then clearly define your unique selling proposition. So why should they buy from you um, and not your competitor? So your goal is to convert your leads into the sale in the quickest time possible. Okay, fourth way to grow your business uh, is to increase transaction frequency or the number of transactions per customer per year. So as I said earlier, it's a lot harder to sell to new customers. So it makes sense to encourage your existing customers to buy more from you and um, you know, or more of your products or more of your services. So you can do this by sending reminders, um, introducing VIP, VIP cards, uh, you might offer a special deal to existing customers. Book a meeting from a meeting. So if they're not sure at that, at that first sales meeting, book another one to go through it again with them. Um, and then introduce, if you introduce any new services, make sure that they're fully aware of what the new services um, are. The fifth way to grow your business is to increase your transaction value. Now, I do have increased prices up there, but it doesn't always mean to increase your price. But we all know that that certainly does help. Um, think about how you could add value to your customers. Um, could you provide them with a range of options of your products or services so they feel like they're, they're getting um, some choices there? Um, and do your customers know of all the products or services that you sell? Don't presume that they do know. Educate them. Um, and you might want to, so basically, as we know, McDonald's is the perfect business model. Um, it may not have the perfect um, uh, burgers and fries, but um, the perfect business model. Um, so following the would you like fries with that theory or concept is really great. You can adapt that to your business. Um, I'm a big believer of not offering discounts unless the customer buys some type of purchase add-on. Um, so remember, if you do provide discounts, they are going to basically reduce the effect of increasing your transaction value like this number five. Um, explains. The sixth way of growing your business is to reduce your variable cost or your cost of sales. 
So these are the costs that go up and down um, and it follows the pattern of your sales. So they're uh, direct labour, cost of materials uh, and uh, sales commissions. You may need to implement better systems to accurately record time and materials used. Um, and you could look at ways to reduce rework and wastage as well. So just remember a small percentage change here can significantly impact your bottom line. And the final way to grow your business is reduce your overheads. These are your fixed costs like um, telephone, electricity, rent, office supplies, insurances is a big one, um, and so on. Um, so a good idea to, um, to go through, some people find that really overwhelming to try and reduce all their overheads, but the best way to do it is to run off a profit and loss and just go through each line item, allocate if you have a team, a team member to find you a better deal for that item if you think it can be reduced. So obviously if you don't have a team, you'll have to do it yourself, unfortunately. Okay, so let's go through a growth equation. So this shows how the small changes in those seven key areas can have a really a substantial impact on your profit. So I'll go through the current KPIs and profit in an example company. Uh, then I'll show you the impact that small changes can make on the profit and the value uh, of the business. Uh, and for simplicity's sake, the numbers have been rounded for those who are super fussy with their numbers. So we've got a, um, a business here that has 765 customers with a retention rate of 85%. And so that means they've got a re retained customers of 650. They receive 145 leads at a, con at a conversion rate of 50. So they're acquiring 73 new customers per year. So it's a total number of customers of 723. Now, each customer makes on average 1.1 transactions uh, with this business at a value of 1,560. So it makes the annual sales just over 1,240,000. The cost of goods sold is 70%, which I actually think is quite high, but depending on what the, the business is doing, uh, and the overheads is 265,000. So the net profit is 107,000. Um, and then basically what we're demonstrating here, uh, we're going to use a really basic valuation method and that's a multiplier of three times the profit. Um, and this is not usually how you would value a business, but this is just a rough guide. So the current value of the business is just over $320,000. So what changes could this business make to improve the profit and its value? So the first way we know to grow your business is to increase your customer retention rate. So let's say that the, um, the business created a customer, customer loyalty program or created a, a Facebook um, page or group, um, and this resulted in an increase by 5%, um, and then the retention rate is now 90%. Um, that has now... Um, retained an extra 39 customers for the year. Let's just say they've got the same number of leads, but um, their conversion rate actually dropped by 5%. That might have been because of COVID, um, people are less confident in buying their services. Uh, so now they've only acquired 65 new customers for the year, but we've still got total number of customers at 754. Um, and because of the loyalty program, let's just say those customers um, now um, purchase um, 1.3 number of transactions per year from this business. And we've increased the business value um, or transaction value, sorry, by $40, so to $1,600. That now creates annual sales of uh, $1,567,000. Uh, and if the business negotiates uh, better terms with their suppliers or improves their uh, inventory process, they've managed to reduce their cost of sales um, down to 65%. Uh, 
Um, however, their expenses did go up by $35,000 to $300,000. So this now gives a net profit of $248,000 uh, and the valuation has increased by $424,000. So you can see by making the small changes, so the 5% increase in retention rate, um, a, a point two of a, um, a movement in the transactions per year, a $40 increase in the transaction value, even with the lower conversion rate and the increased expenses, they were managed to more than double their profit. Okay, so um, just remember this is a really simple example um, your numbers obviously will be different. So meet up with your accountant um, or your business advisor and discuss what small changes that you can make in your business that will give you the biggest impact on your profit. So as Albert Einstein famously said, uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. So we've basically got two choices. We can do nothing or we can take action. And obviously the latter is the better option. Um, I understand that business, as business owners, we're really tired at the moment and concerned, um, but it's also really important to keep moving forward. Um, so make a simple plan today, commit to at least three actions that you'll take as a result of today's webinar, write them down, give each of them an owner, um, and then, a completion date as well. Uh, if you want our support, reach out, but basically find yourself a cheerleader, your own little cheerleader, they, that's someone who's enthusiastic and supportive for you um, and helps you make those changes in your business. So that's it for the first part of the presentation. Has anyone got any questions for me on either on um, making a change, on the flywheel, uh, or the seven ways to grow your business. Sharon, have you got any questions at all? At the moment, we don't have any questions. So if anybody's got anything, um, type your message in now, let me know. Okay. What I think I might do is go straight into the COVID support, uh, if that's all right, uh, and what the new assistance is uh, available to New South Wales businesses, really. So there's a lot I'm going to go through. So there's a new grant available for micro businesses. There's a new cash flow boost available for New South Wales businesses. There's uh, an extension of the previously released New South Wales uh, grants. So it's a one-off cash grant. Um, there's now, um, I'll, I'll go through how to measure your revenue difference. Um, I'll go through the eligibility criteria for small business, and this is for the grant. Um, and I'll also go through the criteria for the tourism and hospitality industry because it is a little bit more relaxed because they're suffering so much. Um, there's also payroll, new payroll tax relief available. Um, there is increased disaster payments available for your workers if that is applicable. There's also rent relief options. Um, we've got Dine and Discover voucher extensions. Uh, we'll, I'll talk about what next steps you need to take and then we'll have questions at the end. So I'll go through really quickly here. There's a lot of information, um, but there's a lot of new, new support available, which is great. So with the new micro business grant, uh, this is for businesses with turnover between $30,000 and $75,000. Um, they must demonstrate there's a 30% reduction in their revenue. Um, and this is eligible for people, um, only for people whose primary source, their business income, sorry, must be their primary source of income. So if you've got a business and you've got a full-time job as well, more than likely you will not be eligible for this grant. Um, I would say that you'll need a statement from your accountant to confirm the loss in revenue. Uh, it's only applicable to businesses that operate in New South Wales. Uh, and what is available here is, is a fortnightly grant of $1,500. So that's quite good. Um, they have also decided to backdate this $1,500 grant per fortnight from the very first week of lockdown. 
for the new cash flow, uh, sorry, the cash boost available for New South Wales. This is only available after the fourth week of lockdown. Okay, so um, it will be continued to be available until lockdown uh, is complete or finished. Um, and so we're going into the fourth week, I believe, next week. So that's when the grants, uh, the, the cash boost will be available. It's actually available to non-employing businesses and employing businesses. So the employing businesses, um, obviously they've got staff. Uh, so they will receive between $1,500 and $10,000 per week. The non-employing businesses are sole traders and basically their assistance will be capped at $1,000 per week. So this is applicable for businesses with turnover from 75,000 all the way to 50 million. So that covers quite a large amount of small businesses here in New South Wales. Uh, your business must prove that you've dropped uh, in revenue uh, by 30% over a two week period. And we'll go uh, on to how to measure that. Uh, and these payments, uh, the cash boost payments will be based on 40% of your payroll payments. So uh, what you must do is you must maintain your full-time, part-time and your long-term uh, in casual employees. And I believe that is measured or the number is measured as of yesterday's date, so the 13th of July. Um, you will need to register your interest through New South Wales, Service New South Wales. And I believe the registration process is opening today. So it's um, uh, they've made it available really quickly. I can't tell you um, what the payment process is yet. I can't tell you when there, if there's ongoing reporting yet. Um, I can't tell you any of that. But as soon as I, I know, I will, I will pr produce an email and let that um, information out to you. So there's now an increase in the original um, New South Wales business grants. Um, if your turnover has dropped by 70% or more, you are now entitled to $15,000 and that has gone up from $10,000. Uh, between 50% and the 70%, you'll be entitled to $10,500 and that was originally $7,500. Uh, and between 30 uh, and 50%, you'll be entitled to $7,500 and that was originally $5,000. So this is available for small businesses, sole traders and non-for-profit organisations. Uh, and the grants should be used for business expenses such as rent, wages, utilities, whatever. What we, I don't know how they're going to audit that, but what we don't wanna see is the money going into the business and then straight out to the owner, kind of pay some bills with that. So these grants are available from the 19th of July, uh, which is also Monday. How is the drop in revenue measured? Uh, now it's measured over a minimum of two week period. So that measurement can start from the 26th of June. So that was the original lockdown date. So that means, what it means is that first two week period, we've already been through two weeks of lockdown. So if you can tick, I would say at least 70%, then apply for the grant straight up. Don't wait around. Um, now, that measurement of income drop um, or the revenue drop is compared to an equivalent period back in 2019, so it's two years ago. So there's two different grant streams available uh, at the moment. One is for small business in general, uh, and the other is the tourism and hospitality industry. So for small businesses um, to receive that $15,000 or up to $15,000 grant, your turnover must be at least $75,000. Your wages must be below the payroll tax threshold of $1.2 million. Uh, and you have fewer than 20 full-time equivalent employees. You must get a statement from your accountant to, um, to confirm that loss in revenue and it's available to businesses operating primarily in New South Wales. And that's all, of part, all parts of New South Wales, it's not just Sydney. So for tourism and hospitality, 
um, the criteria is a little bit more relaxed. So the turnover must be more than 75,000, but your wages must be below $10 million. So again, a statement from the accountant is needed to confirm the loss uh, and it's um, available for uh, businesses operating in New South Wales. So with payroll tax, there has been an extension in, in the payroll tax um, relief. So initially the due date for the lodgement and payment of your 2001 annual payroll tax reconciliation that was initially extended to the end of August, and now that is extended further to the 7th of October. So you have the option to defer, also have the option to defer your July and August payroll tax payments also till the 7th of October. So that means that your July, August and September payments will all be due, plus your reconciliation for the for last year, will all be due on the 7th of October. Now, these deferrals are optional. So if you feel like you can handle um, uh, that liability, then please do so. But it is available for all businesses in New South Wales. There's also been um, uh, an announcement that the payroll tax liabilities for this current quarter uh, will be reduced by 25% if you prove that you've had a decline in revenue of 30% or more. Uh, and this is available for all businesses in New South Wales, uh, and they must have wages between $1.2 million and $10 million. So um, for anyone who has had to lay off workers and you know they're not working at the moment, there are disaster payments available. So for those who lost more than 20 hours a week, they will now receive $600 per week. And that has gone up by $100. And initially it was the $500. Um, it's now been extended to those who lost between eight hours and 20 hours a week also. Uh, and they will receive $375 per week. So again, it's available for all of New South Wales workers, not just those in Sydney. Uh, and they should apply through their MyGov app. Um, apparently, um, before now, they had to uh, make the claim ongoing, uh, and that ongoing basis is no longer necessary now. So the rent relief. So this has been a really big discussion. Um, retailers. Uh, should work with their landlords to see if they um, can get a rent reduction or uh, deferral. Um, you'll, you will need to evidence that more than likely, just like the last time, and I would say a minimum of 30% uh, income reduction would be a good guide for you as well. Uh, there are land tax rebates available for landlords who give rent relief, and that land tax um, rebates is dollar for dollar for the for the rent relief provided apparently. Um, there's also new residential tenancy protection rules in place, which um, means that no one can be evicted over the next 60 days. Um, also, if workers uh, do need to negotiate with their residential landlords, uh, they will need to show a 25 percent reduction in income before that relief is available. If landlords are um, assisting uh, their tenants with rent relief, uh, they could be given um, $1,500 from the state government for assisting their, their tenants, which is nice. I think that's a one-off payment. I'm not really sure there. So the Diner Discover, we know that uh, that was extended till the end of August. They haven't announced any further extensions, but what I would suggest is that you um, watch this space. Um, those vouchers can be used for takeaway, so long as the customers uh, use the QR codes to check into the business when picking up the food, it's not available for, de for delivery. Okay, so what are your next steps? So the grants will be available from the 19th of July. Um, your uh, registration process for uh, the cash boost, uh, you should be, if you 
already know that you can meet that 30% criteria, lodge your interest through the Service New South Wales, and apparently that will be open today. Um, and I'm not sure how quickly those payments will come through, as I said. Um, your assessments, uh, when looking at your drop in revenue, they need to be compared to the same period from 2019, so that's two years ago, not last year. Uh, ask your accountant to help you assess the criteria and prepare a statement um, or a letter to confirm that eligibility. You will need that as part of the, um, uh, the application process. Um, and apply for your New South Wales business grants through your Service New South Wales website as well. You will have to use your own login and password. We can't do that application for you. Uh, and really, if you are experiencing significant loss in revenue or financial hardship, reach out to your landlord, ask for your rent reduction or, or rent uh, deferral, contact your financial institutions for uh, discussions on how they can help you as well. Okay, so that's uh, it for me. I know I went through that really quickly, um, but has anyone got any questions about the grants that are, are available, the cash boost, uh, or the eligibility criteria? And you can take yourself off mute if you like and, and just ask the question. Okay, so I've got a couple. Um, we've got a good point from Susan Rochester. She mentioned that you can go on to the Services New South Wales website and register your interest for any updates, which is uh, you just scroll down to the bottom and you put in your email address and you'll be notified immediately um, from Services New South Wales if there's any updates, which I recommend for all business users. Uh, so we've got a couple of questions here, Suzanne. Um, let me just scroll through them. Okay, so for Anil. Anil stop sharing my screen. Yep. Anil has asked a couple of questions. Um, so I'll kind of give them both so maybe you can answer them at the same time. Um, <laughs> so thank you, Anil. Uh, with the cash flow boost, does this mean that there's no support for the first, first three weeks of lockdown? Yeah, I think in your um, in the pres in that slide, Suzanne, it said that well, actually, it's probably the four weeks because it said that there's no. It'll be you can access this after the fourth week. Yeah, um, so um, there's two areas there. If you're a micro business, they're going to backdate that fifteen hundred dollars per fortnight available to the first lockdown date. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a good thing. Um, if you are experiencing a minimum of 30% drop in revenue, you will have access to the Service New South Wales grant of now up to $15,000, but you won't have access to the cash boost until week four. I, I'm not sure, I don't, I can't tell you whether they're going to backdate the payments for that um, lockdown yet. I haven't got those details, but it's okay. something just so to watch out for. The cash boost doesn't replace the grants. The cash boost is the is the one that's equivalent to 40% of your payroll. Is that correct? correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's not replacing the... So for the first three weeks, it's effectively that, that the previous grant that was announced, and then mm -hmm. this, the cash boost kicks in, which is 40% of your payroll. That's correct. Right. So if you've at least hit 30% um, drop in revenue, yep. then you would apply for a Service New South Wales um, grant to cover your first three weeks. Now, what I'm hesitant about is if you haven't reached that 70% drop and you think you're going to, you may hold off until you reach that criteria. So um, you only need to measure a two-week period um, so you might say, all right, well, the first fortnight only dropped by 35%, but I know it's going to get worse. So hold off until you can prove your highest amount of drop in revenue. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for some reason I thought, I mean, I haven't read it properly, but I thought that the cash boost 40% uh, of payroll was replacing the other grants, but that's it's, it's a different timing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've got another question from Kylie, uh, and she has mentioned for those incorporated uh, after the two year uh, from 2019, um, will they be eligible for any of the, the payments? So what I'm guessing, well, this is purely a guess. Um, they haven't announced anything or any particular details on anyone who is outside the box there. 
Um, but I know with JobKeeper last time, it was up to us to prove that COVID had significantly affected your business. So if you had sales that were really quite growing and leading up to the business, but you weren't in business two years ago, um, then we might be able to put forward a case. And I think that's the importance uh, of the uh, letter from your accountant, really. So luckily, you've got a really great accountant, Kylie. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay because it's really hard we'll have a look at that so the alternatives um yeah. you know they did have that for job keeper they did have that for the original cash um cash grants available from new south wales originally they haven't announced anything but i think we've got a, from based on precedent we've got a good case to go mm. forward i just noticed on my service new south wales that the the other cash grant from way back is still pending like it's still under review right okay well we better contact them mm. yeah about that okay thank you pleasure we've got another question here from jessica uh, and she says do we process disaster relief payments through payroll or is that paid directly to the employee from services new south wales so that's paid directly to the employee so if you have employees affected uh, by this uh, uh, um, and you've basically um, lowered their number of hours by at least eight hours a week now, then they need to go to their MyGov app and apply directly through there. So that's not a payment that you make on their behalf, that's received directly to the employee. I've got another one here from Steve asking, uh, does the wages include annual leave and loading in determining the support amount? And that would be... Good question. Yeah. I would say yes. I would say they would look at your annual wage figure. Um, as I said, I don't know what the ongoing reporting would be if it's going to be up to $10,000 per week. I would probably suggest there's going to be some type of evidence necessary to ensure that you've still got wage payments coming through. Um, but I just don't know those details at the moment. Okay, so I've got a, uh, another question from Shelley. Uh, she is asking about the cash flow boost and just wondering whether um, she has to maintain her long employees, um, including casuals. Does this mean that they have to give them the payments even though the, they are under current lockdown and um, they are closed under the orders? Really good question, Shelley. Um, basically, all I've read at this point is that you must maintain the employees. And I don't exactly know what that means. Does that mean that your number of employees on your books is still maintained? Does it mean the level of wages that you're paying? Uh, these are the kind of details that I don't suspect that anyone has kind of released any information at the moment. Um, but as soon as I know, I will just make sure, if you could just make sure you provided your email address, Shelley, I'll add you to our email list. As soon as there's an update, uh, we'll be sending that out. Um, we've got her email address. That's great. Um, we've got a question from Corinne. With the cash flow boost, does that apply to entities that don't have employees? Um, well, no. So it's based on 40% of your wages, except for the non-employing entities. Uh, now, a non-employing entity means really a sole trader. So you're working heavily in the business. You don't have anyone helping you, uh, but it's part of your, um, you know, income earning uh, structure. I would say if you have a separate entity and they do not have any wages, then there's no cash boost available for that. If you are a sole trader and you technically don't have employees, then that is a non-employing entity for this purpose and you will be able to uh, gain the $1,000 per week capped. Okay, just reading uh, just a quick question um, from Tim. Um, well, it looks like it's Jeanette. <laughs> Hi, Jeanette. Uh, the New South Wales government has said which 
uh, which businesses can still operate if building sites are still open where we would stand or where we would stand if we shut down uh, our site. So if there was an order to shut down the site. Um, so at the so moment, Jeanette, I would training. be looking, it's all about your revenue turnover. So if you can prove in a two week period only that your revenue has dropped by from a 30% minimum, that is your minimum for any of these, um, uh, these assistants, then um, that's all you need to prove. It doesn't mean, mean that you can't go to work. It doesn't mean that you have to have a shutdown site. So purely, it could be full coincidence that one week in 2020 or two weeks in that fortnight in 2021, you don't have any invoices. And then all of a sudden, and that's compared to 2019, where you had 200,000 worth of invoicing, it doesn't matter. It purely could be coincident with timing, but there's no rules to say that you cannot apply because of that. Okay, that looks like that's all the questions that I have through the chat. Is there anyone that's got a, a question that they want to ask directly to Suzanne, if you unmute yourself? Oh, just Lovely. got a new message. Um, yeah, okay. so what we'll be doing um, for our clients is that um, we uh, will start to monitor the turnover now that, that first two weeks uh, has now passed. Uh, we'll be looking at specific industries first. We know which industries have been most affected. Uh, but if you know that your business is 100% affected by this and you can prove at least 30%, just send us an email that will help us get you to the top of the list. Uh, and then we'll start producing those letters for our clients and whatnot. Um, and if anyone else has got any questions, please just be, um, I'm happy to answer your uh, email uh, or your question. Uh, but good luck, everyone, and thank you for attending today. Thank you. Okay. Bye, then. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Um, just uh, if you've requested uh, the uh, business recovery plan or any of the other items, I'll send that to you after the meeting. Beautiful. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sharon. Okay. Bye then. Take care.